Welcome to the presentation of uh, the paper towards a taxonomy of uh, autonomous systems uh, that will be presented at EXA 2021. My name is Elias Jorzathopoulos and I'm with uh, Freie Universität Amsterdam. This is joint work with Stefan Kukile from Technische Hochschule Ingolstadt and Anna Petrovska from Technical University of Munich. Autonomous systems are commonly perceived as systems that um, uh, show some form of uh, self-governance, that they can uh, decide and act on the, by themselves. Uh, this is uh, considered also a very positive po property, uh, both for uh, the users, because uh, higher degrees of autonomy uh, typically brings more uptime and comfort to the users, but also to uh, the uh, maintainers and developers of systems, because uh, higher degrees of autonomy uh, can bring uh, less human effort in managing, optimizing uh, and uh, correcting uh, the systems. However, uh, we see that there is a lack of uh, common understanding of uh, the term uh, autonomy uh, that um, makes it difficult to compare different systems with respect to their degree of autonomy. And this has been uh, the main question that we wanted to uh, answer in this work, how to characterize and compare systems with respect to their degree of autonomy. Uh, we have been uh, indeed inspired by uh, also the SAE taxonomy on driving automation that specifies this uh, six levels of uh, driving automation. So we were wondering, can we do something similar? Can we provide a taxonomy, but not focusing on driving automation, but on general uh, autonomous systems? Modern systems, for example, cyber physical systems, are engineered to deliver thousands of functions. Taking as an example a modern car, some functions, for example, switching on the radio, are directly controlled and are meant to be controlled by the user. Other functions, for example, some encryption services, they cannot be controlled by the user and oftentimes the user is not even aware about their existence. Considering what I just said, it is not trivial to classify complete system as autonomous or non-autonomous. Instead, autonomy is a property of a single function. The only two statements that can be made with certainty are the following. First, if all functions of the system are autonomous, then the system can be called autonomous. Second, if no function is autonomous, then certainly the system is non-autonomous. Anything in between cannot be captured with precision. We identified three main aspects that need to be considered while defining autonomy. In the first main idea or aspect, we say that defining autonomy le uh, levels of a system is possible only by focusing on the system function and by looking at the level of interaction that a user has with the system function. Intuitively, the more user interaction is in place, the less autonomous the system is. The second main idea behind our taxonomy is to distinguish between systems that learn during runtime and systems that do not learn, meaning they operate on a hard-coded logic that doesn't change during runtime. And finally, as a third aspect, we have identified that to define a system or a system function as autonomous, it always needs to be within an assumed operational context. In other words, a system can behave autonomously only in a certain context, and no system universally behaves autonomously in every contextual condition. Here it also depends how the context is considered, the assumed context can be narrow or broad, and the specification of the context in the system can also also be uncertain and incomplete. This is where, in our opinion, self-adaptation of the system gains its importance, but we'll say a few more words on this in our conclusion. As already mentioned, we consider autonomy as a property of a single function. These functions cannot be considered independently of their context and the users. Conceptually, messages are exchanged between these three units and thus interaction is realized. In the following, let us restrict ourselves to control messages between user and system. The intuition is the following. The less interaction, the more autonomy. This rough idea will be further detailed on the following slide. Given the shortness of time, we only give the intuition and are very happy to refer to our paper for further elaboration. As you can see in the figure, and here only the user and the system is shown, control messages are exchanged in a timed system. Messages do not have to be sent in every single time step t. 
Let us now turn to the different levels. If a function is not autonomous, the user must constantly send control messages to it. The next higher level is intermittent autonomy. This means that control messages are necessary from time to time in order to guarantee a safe and correct system operation. In the case of eventually autonomous functions, after a finite time, a state is reached through suitable learning that from then on no more user interaction is necessary. If this is the case right from the beginning, we speak of a fully autonomous function. The right-hand side shows architectural sketches describing the different levels. It is interesting to note, especially from level 2 onwards, that a component of learning will be necessary to achieve these levels of autonomy. Further consideration of context is essential. In this presentation we have introduced and motivated a taxonomy of levels of autonomy and formally specified it in the paper. Consideration of user, context and system function is essential. Moreover, we briefly depicted architectural sketches for each level. As future work, we intend to investigate in particular the relationship between higher levels of autonomy and the so-called self-star properties, such as self-adaptation. Moreover, we want to investigate more closely the expressiveness, that is, the information content of messages, at the intermittent level. Thank you for your attention and now we look forward to answering your questions and comments.